In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Welcome to our annual celebration of the Chrism Mass to bless the holy oils which will be used for the anointing of our parishioners throughout the Diocese of Oakland. Special welcome to Father Hilary of the Dominicans who is celebrating 70 years as a priest this year. We remember Bishop Cummins, although he's not able to be here today, he is 50 years a bishop in May. And I wanna say a special uh, welcome to the Paulist Fathers, who after 117 Chrism Masses, this will be their last in our diocese. And we thank you, Paulists, for your service to the people in Berkeley and the university. Welcome to all of our priests, religious, lay faithful, and the students of St. Leo's School, who are right here today to worship with us today. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. From the book of the prophet Isaiah. El Espíritu del Señor está sobre mí, porque me ha ungido y me ha enviado para anunciar la buena nueva a los pobres, a curar a los de corazón quebrantado, a proclamar el perdón a los cautivos, la libertad a los prisioneros, y a pregonar el año de gracia del Señor, el día de de la venganza de nuestro Dios. El Señor me ha enviado a consolar a los afligidos, los afligidos de Sion, a cambiar su ceniza en diadema, sus lágrimas en aceite perfumado de alegría, y su abatimiento en cánticos. Ustedes serán llamados sacerdotes del Señor, ministros de nuestro Dios, se les llamará. Esto dice el Señor, yo les daré su recompensa fielmente y haré con ellos un pacto perpetuo. Su estirpe será célebre entre las naciones y sus vástigos entre los pueblos. Cuantos los vean reconocerán que son la estirpe que bendijo el Señor. This is the word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of Revelation. Nguyện xin Đức Giêsu Kitô là vị chứng nhân trung thành, là tưởng chữ trong số những người từ cõi chết trỗi dậy, là thủ lãnh mọi vương tế trần gian, ban cho anh em ân sủng và bình an. Người đã yêu mến chúng ta và lấy máu mình rửa sạch tội lỗi chúng ta, làm cho chúng ta trở thành vương quốc và hàng tư tế để phụng sự Thiên Chúa là cha của người. Kính dân người vinh quang và uy quyền đến muôn thuở, muôn đời. Amen. Kia, người ngự đến giữa đám mây, ai nấy sẽ thấy người, cả những kẻ đâm người, mọi dân trên mặt đất sẽ đắm ngực than khóc khi thấy người. Đúng thế. Amen. Đức Chúa là Thiên Chúa Phán, ta là Alpha và Omega, là đấng hiện có, đã có và đang đến, là đấng toàn năng. The Word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Jesus came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. 
He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today the scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. This was the topic Jesus chose for his very first sermon, so it must be important. And it's right that we could ask, the Lord has anointed me, but for what? For Isaiah, it was to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and release to prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord. The context of this passage is that Israel had been in exile from the promised land. In chapter 61 of Isaiah prophesied that the people would return to Israel and that they would once again be a great nation. And so that greatness was confirmed with the birth and ministry of Jesus Christ, Son of God, Son of David. And so Jesus was anointed. For what? To heal people from all kinds of sickness? To raise the dead? To obey his mother and make wine for a wedding reception? To command the weather? To walk on water to calm his disciples' fear? to preach to all the truth of who God really is. Jesus was anointed for all the exciting and fun parts of priestly ministry. But Jesus was also anointed to embrace the passion that we commemorate in the Stations of the Cross these past 40 days. Jesus was anointed to be betrayed by a fellow priest whom he had specifically called and chosen. Jesus was anointed to go, to go almost alone to his execution. And only one priest stayed with him and the devout women, all who loved him to the end. Jesus was also anointed in order to rise from the dead. And so it is with us. Isaiah said it, Jesus said it, and I say it to you priests, my brother priests. You yourselves shall be named priests of the Lord, ministers of our God shall you be called. We priests here in Oakland are anointed for what? To proclaim liberty to captives, to release people from the captivity of sin through the sacrament of reconciliation to heal the brokenhearted, the person we find crying at a deathbed or weeping in a pew of our church, or the Marine Corps gunnery sergeant that knocked on my 
office door one day, opened it up, and he had a big burly marine private in his hand, and he puts the guy in my office, and he said, Chaplain, this marine has a problem. Now he's going to tell you about it, and he threw him in the chair. There are some, and these are some of the good and enjoyable and rewarding parts of the ministry of a priest. But we priests are also anointed to join Jesus in his suffering and death, the not-so-fun part of the priesthood, but oh, so necessary if we're to be who we are, other Christs. Jesus is the Lamb of God, and so are you and I. He took on himself the sins of others. He endured the pain of sins others had committed. It is part of our job description. Father Walter Chiswick, he was anointed to be a priest, and he was anointed to be a priest and minister underground in Soviet Russia. He was also anointed and had to learn how to be an automotive repairman, which was his day job when he was dropped into Russia. He repaired cars by day, and at night said mass and heard confessions. He was discovered, and he was also anointed to undergo trial and a long imprisonment. Father Nguyen Van Thuan, later bishop and cardinal, was anointed for what? To spend 13 years in a communist prison in Vietnam in solitary confinement. But he was so happy, he sang and all these Catholic hymns that he could remember. Even the prison guards were humming tantum ergo and had to be told to stop. The guards asked him, why are you so happy? And he said, because I'm with Christ. And he couldn't tell them, but they had smuggled in wine in a little medicine jar that said stomach medicine. So he saved some wine and he had some crumbs and celebrated mass in prison. As he said later, those were some of the happiest masses of my life. The Spanish and Mexican Franciscan friars were anointed for what? To found the Catholic Church in California, to build 21 mission communities for Christian Indians. They were also anointed to undergo the pain of seeing all the missions but one seized by the Mexican government in 1834 and all the Indian parishioners and friars expelled and their churches fell into ruin. They were anointed for that too. And so it's our turn, priests of the Lord of the Church of Oakland. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. The Lord has anointed us. Anointed us for what? Yes, we're anointed for the fulfilling parts of ministry, to celebrate Mass, to release people from sin, to heal their bodies through anointing with holy oil, to give them the Holy Spirit at baptism. And you and I, brothers, are also anointed to share the passion and death of Christ. We are anointed to bear effects of sins we did not commit. We are anointed to share in this part of the passion of Christ, passion for those who were harmed by brother priests, Passion of shame for those priests who committed crimes. Passion for the effects these sin have caused on the faith of innocent people. We're anointed for that too. And what will be our response? Well, a natural response is to flee, to run away like the ten apostles who ran away when Jesus was arrested. Ten years ago, when I was new to being a bishop, I had to ask a priest to come in for a very difficult conversation. I had to do an intervention. I had never done one of these before. I was nervous. I did not know what to say. And my first reaction was to flee. 
So I telephoned a senior priest, a friend of the priest in difficulty, and asked him if he'd like to do the intervention. You're his friend, he'll listen to you. This older priest said to me, you're the one who wears the pointy hat, you have to do it. <laughs> With all respect, Bishop, yeah, okay, yeah. I was anointed to make the intervention and the priest I was speaking to was anointed to hear my words. And with the benefit of his anointing, he was able to accept and follow through and receive help and return to ministry a much better priest because of it. And brothers, we're also anointed to share in Christ's resurrection. Father Walter Chiswick was released from a Soviet jail and in his elder years led a thriving ministry out of the Jesuit house in New York. Bishop Nguyen Van Thuan was released from the Vietnamese prison, made a cardinal, gave a retreat to the Pope, and shared with the whole world the graces he had received in prison. Of the 21 missions seized by the Mexican government, 20 are now restored and reopened for Catholic worship. We who have been anointed to share in the passion of Christ are also anointed to share in his resurrection right here in this Church of Oakland. And so although times may be difficult, we trust in the power of Christ's resurrection. Like St. Paul, we hold this treasure, our priesthood in earthen vessels, that the surpassing power of God be not from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not constrained, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are constantly being given up to death for the sake of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Brothers, brother priests, thank you for being priests who stand faithfully by Jesus in his trials, but also in his resurrection. May I ask the priest to stand, please, for the renewal of our promises. Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day, when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? I am. Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination? Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the head and shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls? As for you, dearest sons and daughters, my brothers and sisters, 
Pray for your priests, that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ the High Priest, so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. And pray also for me that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness, and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher and the servant of all. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Amen. Most Reverend Father, behold the oil of the sick. We bring you this olive oil and ask that it be blessed for the anointing of those who suffer in mind, body, and spirit. May the oil which you bless here today be used throughout our diocese to bring healing and peace to those in need. O God, Father of all consolation, who willed to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son. Listen favorably to the prayer of faith. Send forth from the heavens, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the paraclete, upon this oil in all its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body, so that by your blessing, everyone anointed with this oil as a safeguard for body, soul, and spirit, may be freed from all pain, all infirmity, and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever.
Most Reverend Father, behold the oil of the catechumens. We bring you this olive oil and ask that it be blessed for the anointing of all the infants, children, and adults who are preparing for baptism. May the oil which you bless here today be used throughout our diocese to bring purification to those who have been chosen in Christ. O God, strength and protection of your people, who have made the oil you created a sign of strength, graciously bless this oil and grant courage to the catechumens who will be anointed with it, so that receiving divine wisdom and power, they may understand more deeply the gospel of your Christ. They may undertake with a generous heart the labors of the Christian life and made worthy of adoption as your sons and daughters they may rejoice to be born anew and to live in your church through Christ our Lord. Most Reverend Father, behold this oil made from olives grown in our own diocese, which you will mix with this balsam of sweet perfume to serve as sacred chrism. May this sacred chrism, which you alone as bishop can consecrate, be used throughout our diocese as a sign of sanctification. When anointing the foreheads of those receiving baptism and confirmation, when anointing the hands of priests and the heads of bishops at their ordinations, and when anointing the altar and the walls of a church during the rites of dedication.
Pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God the Almighty Father, that he bless and sanctify this oil, so that all who are outwardly anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. O oh God, author of all growth and spiritual progress, receive in your goodness the grateful homage that the church joyfully offers to you through our voice. For in the beginning you commanded the earth to bring forth fruit-bearing trees, among which olive trees would arise as providers of this most rich oil, so that their fruit might serve for sacred chrism. In the spirit of prophecy, David foresaw the sacraments of your grace and sang of the oil that would gladden our faces. After the world's offenses were washed away by the flood, a dove announced the restoration of peace on earth with the olive branch, foreshadowing the gift to come. In the last days, all this has been clearly revealed when every offense is removed through the waters of baptism. The anointing with this oil causes our faces to be joyful and serene. You also commanded your servant Moses to make his brother Aaron a priest by pouring this oil upon him after he had been washed in water. Still greater dignity was added to this when your son Jesus Christ our Lord insisted that he be washed by John in the waters of the Jordan. You sent the Holy Spirit from on high in the likeness of a dove. You declared by the witness of the voice that followed that you were well pleased in him, your only begotten Son, and you were seen to confirm clearly what the prophet David had foretold in song, that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness above his companion. Therefore we beseech you, O Lord, be pleased to sanctify with your blessing this oil in its richness and to pour into it the strength of the Holy Spirit with the powerful working of your Christ. From his holy name it has received the name of chrism, and with it you have anointed your priests, prophets, kings, and martyrs. May you confirm the chrism you have created as a sacred sign of perfect salvation and life for those to be made new in the spiritual waters of baptism. May those formed into a temple of your majesty by the holiness infused through this anointing and by the cleansing of the stain of their first birth be made fragrant with the innocence of a life pleasing to you. May those anointed with royal priestly and prophetic dignity be clothed with the garment of an incorruptible gift in keeping with the sacrament you have established. May this oil be the chrism of salvation for those born again of water and the Holy Spirit, and may it make them partakers of eternal life and shares of heavenly glory through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design we're pleased to decree that one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal Banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself, and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, John, our retired bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you 
the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Clistus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Consagonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve these offerings, this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith. Therefore, o Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar Receive the most holy body and blood of your Son. May be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, Father Tarsicio La Nuevo, Father Robert Mendoza, Father Alexander Snyder, who've gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, 
with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Let us pray. <clears throat> we beseech you, Almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. My brother priests, thank you very much for your worshipful presence here today and also for your continual support for me and for our diocese and your total dedication to the service of the people of our diocese. On their behalf, I wish to thank you and thank you for renewing your promises to Christ and to the people of his church. May God give you many, many happy years like Father Hillary here in the priesthood of Christ. Thank you all to brothers and sisters for joining us today. A special thanks to our people that work in our chancery that uh, support the apostolic ministry of Christ in this diocese. May you take the oils back now to your parishes where they can be uh, enjoyed in the anointings of all of our faithful. Look forward to seeing the priests afterwards uh, downstairs. Thank you to our deacons, servers, and our wonderful choir. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.